This is the Chi Codes Podcast with your host, Thomas Dockstader. So, Brad, thank you for coming on. Um, happy to have you here. Um, I am excited to have you on because, well, one, you're my brother-in-law, right? Married yep. to my little sister. Um, and also, we've known each other for a really long time. And what, how, how long have you been with Mary? Uh, it's been about 14 years, 14 years. Okay, yeah. cool. So I know, I remember you guys met in high school, right? Yeah. High like school, high sweethearts. school sweethearts. Awesome. Yep. And now you're married, you have two kids. Yep. Um, awesome, man. So the reason I want to have you on is because, um, so two reasons you, I've known you a really long time. You knew me pre, you know, pre soap sobriety. Um, and you've known me post sobriety and you've seen really the whole entire progression from when I was at my worst yeah. to when now I'm, I'm, I really think I'm at my peak or best that I've been in my entire life. Um, but even more so than that, um, uh, you know, I recently have put uh, all my efforts into um, the Chi Codes, which is a method in which I help individuals figure out how to kind of overcome past issues, traumas, and um, develop a, a a way to deal with new stuff and really kind of take control of their lives and, and just ultimately be more happy in general. Mm -hmm. And... Um, with you specifically, I, it's kind of funny, the people that I've taken through it, I didn't, it wasn't a plan, right? right. It was like, um, it just happened to come up in conversation. So um, really quickly, you know, um, tell me a little bit about yourself, H help everybody understand, hey, wh where'd you grow up, you know, things yeah. like that. And then we'll get, we'll kind of get into it a little bit more. Yeah, so I born and raised in Utah, mm -hmm. grew up in Sandy, uh, went to Jordan High School. That's where I met your little sister. Okay. Uh, we've been dating ever since married, um, you know, over, I think the interesting about interesting thing about my life is, you know, I, I had to grow up pretty young or grow up pretty quickly at mm -hmm. a young age, right? Mary and I bought our first house when I was 21, she was 20, got married. She was 19. I was 20. So really had to figure out what is life at such a young age and jump right into it. So what I've really learned the last few years of my life is, you know, how can I be a better father? How can I be a better husband? How can I love myself? And I have been really focusing on that the last yeah. year between weight loss, um, just mental health overall. Yeah. Right? So I think, um, from my view, like I felt like when you guys met, it was just like, you know, this match made in heaven, you guys just clicked right away. Mm -hmm. And for, for, yeah, for 14 years, as long as I can, like for quite some time, I remember it's Brad and Mary. Right. And, um, what was interesting to me is you guys dated for a long time. You didn't rush into getting married. Right. You, you, you lived together before you got married. Um, all of those things. And then when you got married, you bought a house, then you didn't have kids for a couple of years, right? Right. Like it's pretty, I mean, in Utah, it's really typical. People get married young, they have kids right away, right? You guys didn't get married. You, you kind of had your fun and all those things. So I think that's really cool. And and to me, from my perspective, it's a it's like a super solid relationship and, and you guys have done absolutely awesome. And then later on, you decided to have kids. But one thing that kind of happened with, with you guys, it happens with a lot of people, happened with me, is like you transition from like this teenage time mm -hmm. you then go into your 20s but there's like quite a bit of like fun right yeah. partying football games you know whatever whatever all the stuff um and then i feel like when you like hit your 30s something changes <laughs> and you realize that you're not as um resilient as you were before right yeah. like the more food you eat you know it, it it's kind of sticks around it doesn't like go away um and one thing i think the adds to that is when you have kids, there's an added amount of stress. That's almost like it, it, I try to describe it. Like my son is the greatest thing for me. He's also the hardest thing yeah. for me. And so I think when you stack all those things on, I think that you start to realize, and this is kind of what I talk about in my program is like when people get to like their thirties and forties, they first at some point in time, they have like this like moment where they're like, what am I doing? And I feel like that kind of happened for you and Mary, like last year. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. I, I think 
you hit it spot on. Mary and I really spent most of our 20s just enjoying each other, mm -hmm. right? Went on vacations, we're hanging out with friends, a lot of just social outings, right? Mm -hmm. Then un unexpectedly, we just had Jack, our first boy. <laughs> He's uh, six years old now. Okay. Um, you know, we, we had to really grow up then. And over the last, uh, last six years, you know, it's been a transition of, you know, going from that stage of life of trying to figure out how can I still have fun, but be a parent. Mm -hmm. Right. So over this last year, we really have been focusing and prioritizing our mental health. Mm -hmm. So, uh, about, about a year and some change a year and a few months, Mary and I just had a decision of, you know, we got to change our life. Mm -hmm. I was 240 pounds, very overweight. Um, I was drinking alcohol every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, I wasn't happy. Yeah. So I just decided to make a change and it started with just going on walks every single day. I didn't even know what I wanted to be honest. So I just figured I'll just start with taking walks every day, see what I can do. Uh, try to lose some weight. I, I was very unhappy with myself. So just started doing that and I figured out, you know, after I lost about probably five to 10 pounds within the first month, it hit me. I was like, Whoa, this is life changing. <laughs> like I have more energy, right? Right. The, the scale's going down. My pants are fitting me looser. Right. So it was just a little motivation to start off for the first year. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, if you could boil it down, like, what do you think it was that kind of made you guys just kind of like pause and be like, well, what are we doing exactly? Like, what, what do you think that was for you? You know, that's a great question. And I think what it was, like you mentioned earlier, both Mary and I are in our thirties now, mm -hmm. right? I'm turning 33 next month. Mm -hmm. We have two kids. We have a mortgage, a new house. Our son is going into first grade and we're like, what are we doing with our lives? Mm -hmm. You know, we're eating out. We're not having the best food habits. Like we're, I was drinking every single day mm -hmm. and it was just normal for me to wake up hungover. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that just was a period of like talking with Mary and Mary is a big part of why I started getting sober mm -hmm. because she's the one who was like, what are we doing with our lives? Yeah. Like we have two young kids, like we aren't healthy, we're overweight and we are not happy. Mm -hmm. Like we're happy together, but within ourselves. And I didn't understand what that meant with her. <laughs> I've always felt like Mary has always been the one to lead me okay. in a way. Right. Like I've always, I have I haven't always known who I have been. Right. I feel like Mary has always been the one who's been like, Hey, this is what we should do with our life. Well, I feel like, I mean, you saying that you haven't always known who you, who you are. I feel like that's a lot of people's issue Yeah. because you, you like, I, I look at you guys and I kind of like, I think it's pretty typical of a lot of people. It's like you go to school, you guys kind of did what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. right? Go to school. Right. You, you guys even took time to get married. Right. You didn't rush in anything. You did all stuff. You got, you bought a house, you did all stuff, but it's like, okay, well, we got married. And then I think at that point, a lot of people were just kind of following what society is doing. Right. It's like, Hey, your friends from high school. Now they're, now they're doing this and now oh, let's go to the youth game. Let's do this. Let's do that. Right. Yeah. Like, I think a whole decade passes you by and you're not really conscious of what you're doing. You're literally just like, working and living for the weekend and right. It's the, what's the next fun thing to do. And you're I, like, you're on cruise control. Yeah. You're unconscious of what you're doing. Yeah. And you know, I, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection through this program with mm -hmm. you. And I look back over the last 10 years and you hit it, hit the nail on the head. It really was on autopilot, like wake up, go to work, come home, hang out with the kids, go to bed <laughs> and just wait until Friday night. And honestly, for me, it was looking forward to having my first drink. So, okay. So that's one thing. Cause I can tell you from my experience, right? Like, I think I started drinking in my, in my teen years, 18, 16, 17 is when I started drinking. A lot of it was beer. Mm -hmm. Then I, I can't remember when it was, but I was like, I would say it was like in my early twenties. I started taking shots of vodka and I mean, you and I have taken our shots right <laughs> in, the, in the day, but, yeah. um, I started doing that and see for me, like 
you're right. Originally it was, oh man, Friday night, I'm going to go drink a bunch of beers. Mm -hmm. But then what I realized, I'm like, oh man, you just take one shot of vodka and you're good. So then it started moving from like the weekends to like, oh, it's Thursday. I'm going to tie one on on Thursday. And then Friday is going to be kind of a wash day at work anyway. And then Saturday, Sunday, and then I'll clean up my act on Monday. And then it kind of grows to like, well, I'll have a couple of drinks on Wednesday, a couple of drinks on Tuesday, a couple of drinks on s Monday. I'll have a drink at dinner. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so before you know it, again, it's like this blur. It like slowly happens over time. But before you know it, you're doing it all the time. And I think, see, here's the thing. You were around me and my brothers, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just, I mean, we've all struggled in my family, we've had a lot of struggle with addiction issues, moving from, you know, alcohol to hard drugs, right? Uh, youngest brother is living on the streets right now, addicted to heroin. Everybody struggled with, with addic addiction and you were kind of around us. But one thing that I lied to myself about all the time was I was like, well, my mind's not as bad as my brother's because I haven't been arrested mm -hmm. and I, I hold my job and he loses his job and I hold my job. Right. And so that's, I rationalized with myself about like, oh, you know, I'm not like them, right? Talk to me a little bit about that. Cause I can imagine that's similar thought process, right? Cause it sneaks up on you, right? Talk to me about that. Yeah, you, I mean, you're right on. And all it is is making an excuse for yourself mm -hmm. to feel better, right? The way that you're saying, oh, I'm not as bad as my other brothers. Right. I, I have a hold. I'm full, holding a full time job. Mm -hmm. I'm making commission checks, I'm mm -hmm. making good money. I'm not as bad as them. It was the same thing for me. Yeah. Right. I would always just make my I would make an excuse like. I deserve to have this drink because I put in I I put in hard work this week. I was able to close X number of deals. I was able to do X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. I deserve to have this. I need to relax. Mm -hmm. And it was just justifying it. And I wasn't being honest with myself when in reality, Tom, it was just me coping. It was a coping mechanism. Yeah. And that's how I coped with everything was by drinking or eating bad foods. Yeah. And isn't that wild that you, like, if you think about that now, if you went back three or four years and I, and you said to yourself, like, I came to you and said, Brad, that's not, you're not, that's not good. You're coping. I think we, we, we vibrate on certain levels and it's like, we don't want to hear certain things. We don't agree. We, we, we couldn't agree with it. Right. We're like, no way. I'm not that way. I'm this, I'm that. Right. Like mm -hmm. we have this constant inner monologue that's, that we're telling us about ourselves. Right. And I think I write in my book and I have a whole list of all the things that I used to tell myself that I was successful and, you know, blah, 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 right. blah, right. All these things. It wasn't until I quit drinking and I sat down and got like really honest with myself and I'm said, what am I really truly? Like if, if I take these things away, what am I truly? And I wasn't very successful. I wasn't very happy. I wasn't, I was working for the weekend. I, I was just getting by. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's such a powerful story because I think, I think that the way I look at it with you and Mary specifically is like, you guys are just like an all American family, right? You're, you are, you are literally like, I think like that just almost like a model American family, right? You didn't do anything crazy. You didn't get into trouble. You didn't, you know, um, accidentally, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. Right. Like it was yeah. all, you kind of just followed the rules more or less. But the thing is, I feel like life kind of catches up with you. And even for the, the, the couple that really didn't have like these major traumatic events happen, you guys both almost at the same time made this decision. You're like, Whoa, what are we doing? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think for you and Mary, both last year, you just started working out, right? That was the thing. You started working out and you really like reduced the amount of alcohol. Not, you didn't tell me about it. You didn't tell anyone about it really. You just kind of started doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, what happened was, I think one, one day I went over there and I'm like, oh my gosh, Brad's freaking down 50 pounds. How much have you lost now total? Uh, so I'm about 70 pounds. 70 pounds. You lost freaking 70 pounds in a year. And Mary's the same, right? Yeah, she's yeah. about the same. Mary lost 70 pounds as well. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Well, what happened guys is, um, I was at their house for their son's birthday party and see, I've been doing this work for a long time, right? I been seven years sober. I, I wrote the cheat code, um, uh, four years ago or five years ago. I developed this program a long time ago. I didn't really bring it to market like I am now, but 
a lot of what I went through is when I, when I made a lot of changes for myself, I started to see other people and I could see that they were struggling in certain areas. But I also knew that you can't force something like this on someone. They have to, it has to be their decision to do it. And when I was at your house, you know, back in, back in May, um, I just sat down with you and Mary and I was like, Hey, you guys are like doing so awesome. You've completely changed everything. And I feel like that's like a mind, that's like a body thing. What about your mind? Where are you guys at with your mind? And I kind of explained like, Hey, look, I'm developing this program. I want to, I want to, I, I want to walk you through it. Right. And to be completely honest with you in even telling you guys that I was setting myself up for a certain level of rejection. And what I mean by that is like working with family specifically, I think is harder than anything else. Cause you, dude, you saw me in the, the worst of me, right? You saw, you saw <laughs> the worst versions of me. Right. And so it's like, well, what does this guy know? How does, you know, whatever. Right. So you, you, you agreed, you said, Hey, yeah, I'll do it. Right. right. So talk to me a little bit about where you were then and then kind of like what revelations you started to get as we started to work through the program. So when we had that conversation, the first thing that really stuck out to me was your analogy about being honest to yourself. Mm. So I've never really thought about that until that conversation. You know, you the, the first example you gave me was what time do you set your alarm? Do you wake up right away when that alarm goes off? I was like, no, I never do that. <laughs> and what did you say to me? You're like, well, you're setting yourself up for, for uh, failure first yeah, thing in the morning, right in the morning. So why are you lying to yourself r right in the morning? And when you said that to me, that's the first thing that clicked. I was like, you know, he's right. I, there's more stuff that I haven't been honest to myself. Well, you're about. the one that sets the alarm. Yeah, exactly. So why, <laughs> yeah. Why do you set it for that time and then not? follow through follow and wake through. up. You know, I, I was in the habit and I think that's what it comes down to is these bad habits that you create and you don't even realize the habits that you create. But since that conversation you and I had, you know, that, that really stuck to me. And I was like, you know, what else have I been lying to myself about? Mm. Right. And even with my journey with weight loss, I started thinking, you know, I, I haven't been honest with myself about like my diet. I haven't been honest about my workout routine. So you know, I, I think what what's really stuck to me over the last few months since, since working out with you is I've been honest to myself, which has allowed me to be honest to my wife, to my kids, mm. to my friends, and even coming here to talk about my everything I've been through, like with alcohol, for example, I didn't realize how much it affected me until recently, mm. you know, and being honest with myself has truly help me start identifying like who I really am mm -hmm. and you know what, who I want to be. And I'm realizing I'm starting to become that man through working with you. That's so awesome, man. I think like, like we were talking about earlier, right? Like you, you kind of move into your twenties and you just kind of start doing the stuff that everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. We're not really consciously making a lot of these choices. We're just kind of falling in and doing what they, what everyone else is doing. Right. And you're hundred percent right in the sense that it's like just stopping and being like, wait a minute, what am I doing? Because every, every action that we take every single day creates the life that we have. Right. Right. And if we're choosing to drink every night, then we're also choosing to wake up and feel like crap from a hangover. Dude, I drank solidly for like 15 years when I finally got sober and woke up like let's say two months after I stopped drinking one morning, I woke up and I was like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I feel good waking yeah. up. What is this? I, I, I actually even forgot that I was having hangovers. It was so bad. Well, I think one thing that stuck out for me is just like once you're fully sober. So I haven't had a drink of alcohol since October, 2023. Awesome, man. Um, you know, just being sober and going through this program and just sitting with your feelings. That's something I've never done mm. my entire twenties. I would always bottle everything up. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm actually like refilling feelings and emotions. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like I'm starting to process stuff a lot differently and it's starting to help me understand who I am mm -hmm. and like, it's okay to have emotions. And this is one thing I, I feel like I struggled with a lot growing up is you need to be a man. Men should not have emotions. Yeah. What does that mean though? Yeah, exactly. What does it mean? Who to like, really who teaches you what that means? Right. You just yeah. looking at like, 
the alpha bro at the gym, right? Is that a man or is it yeah. like, right? Like who, what is it? Who is it? How do I be it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so you said a couple of things. One, so this is the, this is something I really want to like highlight on because I feel like the large area of the society that I want to focus on is the people who they didn't have some horrible thing happen, like a dr drunk driving arrest or, you know, something that's like, oh man, I got to change. Cause that didn't happen to you. Right. Right. Like you were just kind of drinking along with society more or less. And then, I mean, luckily for you, just at some point you're like, Hey, Whoa, I don't really like this. It didn't have to get to that point where something horrible happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Like drunk driving or, I mean, it's just, it can be so bad. Right. It didn't have to get to that point. And the thing is I want to highlight is also, you know, you weren't like, getting domestic violence issues and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you weren't this that out of control um, drinker, but also now you're saying that, Hey, I also realized that it wasn't serving me like I thought it was like, it was really kind of just like holding, it's like a weight, weight. You're, you have a balloon and you're like being weighed down and you're yeah. kind of unaware that you're being weighed down. So I think what's so cool for you is that you didn't get to that point where something horrible happened, where then you said, Oh man, I've got to change my life. I did. Unfortunately, I got to, I had to have a rock bottom moment before I could change, but you didn't. And I think that's such a blessing, but beyond that, like, I think what's really cool, Brad, is that you came to the realization. You're like admitting saying like, yeah, this is, I, alcohol is not good. And, and, and like, it's such a hard thing to admit, right? Yeah. Tell, tell me about that process that you went through just in your own mind about getting to that place where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, it was a really hard process to beginning because I made alcohol such a, a big habit and even just binge eating, mm. um, just doing mindless stuff, watching YouTube nonstop Netflix. You know, I think the process I had to go through was what, what is important to me in my life? You know, is it, you know, living for the weekend, waiting to go through, you know, just X, Y, and Z waiting for the next vacation no, I, you know, what was important to me is like having an, a, a great relationship with my, my daughter and my son, mm -hmm. my wife, my, my family, mm -hmm. I want to create a strong family bond together. And I realized the, my old lifestyle that I had, it just wasn't serving me. Right. Because, you know, every, Monday through, through Thursday, it was just, let's get through the day, go to bed, not enjoy the day mm -hmm. to where now, like the, my mindset now is let's live every day to the fullest. Mm. Like my wife and I, so Mary and I, this, what we've decided to do lately is every day, Monday through Thursday, we have something scheduled for what we're going to do for that day. Mm. When I get off work, Monday is family game night, Tuesday. Um, we're going to do family movie night. So go to like $5 movies Wednesday. It's a, a one-on-one -on -one date with the kids. So last night I took Jack mini golfing. Awesome. Mary just you took too. Andy, just us. Yeah. And Andy, or Mary took Andy out, did her own thing. Yeah. And then Thursday is going to be a date night with Mary and really focus on her and I. So it's just changing our mindset and just like living to the fullest. So previously when you were drinking every night, I feel like for me, it's like this, it's just like you disengage. Yeah. Right. Like you're present physically, but your mind mentally is just yeah. like, Phew. well, and, and I'm realizing I've never been present in my twenties and even in my early, early thirties up until recently, like I was there, but I'd be like scrolling on my phone while hanging out with the kids. There's yeah. a difference from being there and being present. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the thing is everyone can feel that, right. Especially your kids. Right. Like I, um, you know, in discovering myself and going through like past traumas and stuff, the thing is like my parents were always there. Right. But the thing is they had nine kids and it's really hard to give attention to nine kids. And so what I realized is like a lot of the challenges that I had was like wanting like affection and love, but kind of like jockeying for it or not able to get it. And I feel like we do that today with our kids because it, it's not nine kids. It's mm -hmm. the phone or Netflix or whatever, our jobs, that's kind of keeping us mentally away from our family. And I feel like when you, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you decide that you're going to be honest with yourself, you start to watch how you behave with other people. 
And you realize, especially with alcohol, it's like you rid those things out of your life. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I've been a zombie in my own home. I've been a zombie to my kids. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, what the hell have I been doing? Right. I like, yeah. I, I mean, it's incredible. Right. And, and it's like, what, what, fl what switch flipped in my freaking head that what, what kind of trance was I under? And that's, see, that's the thing for me with alcohol is like, I think a lot of people argue, right? Like it's, it's, you know, I think in my job in, in software, you know, sales before, like I would go to a company event and I'd be the only person at the table, not drinking. And everybody like, Oh, that's so brave. You're so brave. Yeah. I literally think like, I'm like, you're brave because you're literally poisoning yourself and you're, you're caught in this like blanket. It's like a wet blanket is over you. That's how I feel. I'm not trying to, you know, disparage anyone from the decisions they make or anything like that, but I don't believe myself to be brave for not drinking. I think it is the other way around mm -hmm. because once you get that clarity, it's like your head comes out of the clouds and you're like, oh my God, I can see. Yeah. Right. Like, I like, tell me about that experience for you this last year of like not using, not using alcohol and just, and even further, right? Like, what, tell me about the things that you've kind of come to a revelation since we've kind of worked together. Well, two parts to this question, right? The first part is in order for me to feel like I could be in a social setting, I used to have to drink. So whenever I used to go hang out with like a bunch of my friends or go do anything in a group setting, it's always revolved around drinking, right? So in order to even have a conversation with a bunch of my old buddies, we'd have to be drunk, <laughs> right? Our whole thing was revolved around drinking. So since I've been sober and like working with you, it's been... It's been really cool to go into a room with a group of people and I'm the sober one. Mm. I used to think that'd be so boring, <laughs> but now I'm there. And like, I, like over the last few months, I've gone to a few different, uh, get togethers with friends mm -hmm. and I'll just be hanging out with my friends and with Mary. Right. And I'll have one of my buddies come up to me and he's like, you know, you, there's something different about you. Like he, like my one friend, he want, he came up to me and he's like, I feel like there's just a different like shift in you. Like what's going on? And we just opened up and I had a genuine conversation with him. This is a friend I've never gotten to that level with before. Right. Cause he just can sense a difference in me. Right. So it's been really cool just to be able to, to be my authentic self mm. and be honest with who I am. And it's, it's really cool to be in a, in a social setting and don't have to drink to feel like yourself or feel comfortable because I'm starting to love myself and I, I can go to a group setting and have a conversation with anyone. Yeah. And on the flip side, like over the last few months, I've had to go on a couple of work trips. What happens when you go to like a work conference? Mm -hmm. Everyone's All talking about margaritas, yeah. wait till the last thing's over. So we can go have some beers, yep. you know, and to be honest, this is one of my first ever work environments I've ever had to go to where I was sober. And it was just a freeing experience to go and just not even like wake up, go to sessions, <laughs> and not be hungover, yeah. right? And actually pay attention right. and learn. Yeah. So it's just been really refreshing and just, um, I, I just love it. Yeah. It, it's a new lifestyle and I, I'm just, I love it. Isn't it incredible? Like I think um, I, I was with you on that, right? Like the, the, the thought of like when I, when I originally started down the process of getting sober, I, the thought in my mind was I'm like, my life is going to be so boring. It's going to be so terrible. It's going to suck so bad. And what I didn't realize is that I was, I was literally like putting blinders over my eyes, drinking all the time. Cause I wasn't experiencing anything. Yeah. And now for me, like, dude, my favorite, like one of my favorite things, this is like one of my favorite things to do, like have cafe Rio <laughs> and like a diet Coke and just like watch like a really cool, funny show and be like involved in it. What's funny is like, I started rewatching series that I had watched before when I was drunk because I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I was like somewhere else. And now I'm like, oh, I'm actually like experiencing it. <laughs> and it's crazy because I feel like it definitely translates when you're with your kids. Mm -hmm. Because like before, say you have a family function, something like that, and you're like drinking and your kids are there and it's a birthday party, something like that. It's almost like you're not really there. And it's like, now that I do those things sober, it's, it's so fun. Like I'm, like I'm in it. Like yeah. I'm, 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 I'm there and I'm, I'm enjoying it. 
And I think the thing here, and I, and, and I talk about this in our, in the program that I go, th- go with, with you through is, you know, you talked about like going into pub into like with your friends and stuff like that, like having, having those, you know, get togethers and everybody think, Oh, I got to get drunk in order to have fun in order to like talk. What that does is it keeps all those conversations on the service. And what I found funny is like a lot of the time you just sit there and talk about how drunk you got at another event, yeah. right? You just talk about how wasted you were at another event and it's like meaningless conversation. Now you're saying, when you go sober, you actually have the capability to connect with someone on a deeper level. And it's like engaging. And the funny thing is he's like, it's like, you're like a magnet to him. He can tell the vibration is different. And didn't you say he asked you like, Hey, tell me what you're doing. I want to do it. Yeah. And it's actually been multiple friends who've done it. It hasn't just been one friend, which is really cool. So it, it, you know, going through this journey and like learning more about who I am and just honestly, I feel like it's just leveling up. Mm. Um, it, it's just been really cool to see like, and, and I'm not telling, and it's like what you said in the beginning, you can't like push something like if like everyone's in a different part of their journey, yep. right? I haven't done anything to like tell people like I'm on a weight loss journey. I'm working out every day. Like I just keep that to myself. Yeah. Right. So it's really like rewarding to have someone come up to you and be like, what are you doing differently? Like you are a completely, you look different and you just, you, you, you like the, the way you talk and like present yourself is completely different from last year. Like, what are you doing differently? I want to know. Right. So it's just, it's a rewarding thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, a lot of people, you know, uh, we all want to be accepted. We all want to be like a part of the group. We want to be, we want to be, we want to get validation and to people to tell us we're cool and funny and this and all these things. What I find is so incredible is when you actually go inside yourself and discover who you are with no, you know, numbing agents of alcohol or any of this stuff, get all that stuff out of there and and spend the time to go deep inside yourself, which is what I teach you how to do with the method, right? It's a step-by-step process of how to go inside yourself because I literally didn't know how to do that before, right? And I think you made the same comment to me. You're like, dude, I don't, I don't really know what to do. Right. Yeah. You mentioned be a man. Well, how do, what, what is that? I believe that like discovering yourself and being your true authentic self is the best way to be a man. I agree. And I think that your wife and your kids can tell a difference because it's really just having this deep confidence and love for yourself. And what's crazy is people can see that dude, people can see it because in all honesty, they are doing the same thing. They are searching for that acceptance but the thing is if you accept yourself all of a sudden everyone wants to accept you they're like dying to accept you well and here's the cool thing like i've been in therapy for for over about a like 12 months now okay right therapy has been a good way for me to to process emotions Mm -hmm. and like there is a point to where in my life where i have just bottle everything up Mm. i didn't know like certain emotions like what certain things felt and the great thing with working with you is you taught me like new routine, like new habits. So I've, I already figured out how to physically make myself better. Right. You've helped me learn how to do it mentally. Mm. And one, what I mean by that is by like daily meditation. That has been one thing that has really changed my life and it's helped me lose all of my anxiety. I think you should tell the story because it's really, it's really, really cool. I think, and I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of start it off. So when we start my program, I talk about, I I explain a few things. We go through a a little bit of, you know, kind of understanding trauma, but then I really, really talk about meditation. I, I, I I talk to it. I talk about it as it's just one of the keys. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think you said to me, you know, midway through the program, you're like, when you first told me that I kind of told myself in my head, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So tell, so tell me, tell me that process. I want to understand what happened full, full length from start to finish. So you first told us about, um, meditation from the first conversation. Yeah. Yep. Right. Back in May, um, started with being honest with yourself. And then you mentioned meditation when he told me that I was like, okay, that, that sounds ridiculous. (laughs) Like who needs to meditate? Yeah. Right. So you sent Mary and I an email with the instructions, how to go through meditation. And I, I didn't even think about doing it. So when Mary sent, when you sent us the message, I just looked at it and disregarded it. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So after meeting with you for the first time, you were like, hey, this is what you need to do for the program. We went through everything. One of the steps was daily meditation. Mm. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to do this, right? I'm, I feel like it's going to be a waste of time. So when I first started it, the, it was very interesting. I, I went into it with an open mind. I was like, okay, it, Tom, as, Tom said this is going to work. Let me do it. Mm -hmm. So the first time I did it, something just like clicked. I was like, whoa, that was weird. It, it really, I remember the first time I was, I, so we, we got done with dinner. Mary and I got done with dinner with the kids. I went into the room. I was like, Hey Mary, just give me about 10 minutes. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to try this. And by the way, it's a very prescriptive way to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Step by step on how to meditate. Yeah. I, right? I, I give a very yeah. prescriptive way to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So step by step. So, um, I knew exactly like what to expect, like what to do, like how to go through it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm sitting in the room. I put in my headphones, no noise canceling headphones. And you shared with me, um, a meditation like soundtrack. Yeah. Yep. Right. So I was listening to that and I was just sitting there, um, saying the mantra in my head and probably about like two to three minutes in, I was like, Whoa, my mind just was clear. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is crazy. So after that first experience, I remember just talking with Mary about it and she had some, a similar experience, right? So I just did that for, I tried it for the first couple of days and I was like, okay, this is great, but I wasn't making a priority. Sure. Right. It was just, oh, I'll do it when I can. Right. So after meeting with you, we were meeting weekly, right? And you'd always bring up, oh, how's meditation going? I'd be like, oh yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And then there was a period where I missed about seven days in a row. And I met with you and you're like, Hey, try to give it a, give it a, a try or a chance again. I was like, okay. I think I said, I think one thing I said too was like, if dude, if you can do it for one yeah, minute, yeah, yeah. that's what you said one for minute. one minute, one it, minute a day, I took that to heart. So I started literally, okay. I, d I don't have to make anything major out of it. I'll yeah. do it for one minute. You don't have to do this full 20 yeah. minute thing, big thing. Right? right. So I started just, okay, I'll try with one minute. And then every day since I've missed one day since then. Every day it gradually has gotten longer, 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 longer. And now it, it, I haven't missed a day and it's a big foundation in my daily routine. I wake up, my alarm goes off at 5.05 every single morning. I work out right after I'm done working out. I go up to my, my back porch and I meditate for 20 minutes. And it is just, it's changed my life. It really has just, it's helped me. And here, here's one thing I've learned from meditation too. I've never been a spiritual person mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, I'm starting to become spiritual through meditation and I'm not saying like God or anything, yeah, I understand. just a higher power. Trust me. I understand. Just a, there's some higher power that I'm feeling. hundred <laughs> percent. See, I, okay. I love this because there's people listening, right? And they're going to think the same thing. Oh, I've heard meditation. I've heard, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a monk. I'm not this, I'm not that. Yeah. And, and for me, even I tried, I walked through it in the book. I tried like, you know, the, the guided meditation, this and that. Yeah. It wasn't until I found the specific type of meditation where when I did it the first time, just like you, I felt it immediately. And I was like, holy cow. But for me, I was in this dire situation where I was trying to quit alcohol mm -hmm. and dude, I went, I didn't, I meditated twice a day for two years. I did not miss anything for two years, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes a night. It completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. It completely rewired my brain. So whenever I teach someone how to do it, I'm like, just do it for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Just, just commit to do it for 30 days. And I promise you, because when I learned how to do it and I saw the benefits of it, I was like, everyone has to know how to do this. Right. Every person I taught my son how to do it. I was like, man, if I knew how to do this, like when I was 15, 16 years old, my life would be completely different. I, I completely agree with it's you. It's not, you don't have to be, believe anything. It is a freaking tool that works so good. So tell me about the benefits that you've noticed pr primarily from it. Uh, mental clarity. Okay. Like I'm able to, whenever a tough decision comes up, I'm able to meditate and somehow I think about it and it helps me, like it, my intuition mm. comes in into play with meditation. So it helps me just make decisions. It helps me like focus within, within myself. So I, I would love to give you an example about today. So I was meditating before I was coming to the podcast. Um, I had a moment today of, 
I was probably meditating for about 12 minutes where I just had a moment of being like, I really do love myself. And I started crying while meditating. I've never had that. Freaking awesome, dude. And I, after I did that, I went upstairs today and I, I, I told Mary, I was like, man, I, I, I'm really realizing I love who I am and who I'm becoming. And really what meditation has done is just, it's helped me understand a lot more of who I am and just helped me with acceptance. It really has. It's helped me with uh, my patients. It's helped me just whenever I have a stressful situation, it helps me calm down. And when I say like it's helped me reduce my anxiety, my entire day was filled with anxiety. I don't have anxiety anymore. And don't you feel like the anxiety is like kind of what led you to have the drinks at night? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. all the anxiety building up and you're like, ah, I just want to get rid yeah. of this. With, with the drinking, the eating food, the staying up late, like the mindless scrolling on like Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Or YouTube. It's just you wanted to just the anxiety would overpower you and you just wanted to distract yourself mm -hmm. to where now, like every single day I meditate, I work out and I've been trying to read a lot more. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't read books my entire adult life. Mm -hmm. So just med meditation has helped me in going through the, these programs with dealing with like past traumas, um, trying to heal my inner child, the, the daily meditation. It really has just helped me so much yeah. in my life. It is. It, I mean, man, I just want, I, I wish I could just get everyone in the world to do it. Yeah. Right. Cause if you, I mean, if you think about it, like we would be so much better because I, but this is kind of how I view it. Like, you, you know, like the, um, in Dr. Strange, when she like forces yeah, him out yeah. of his body, I feel like when you meditate regularly, it's like when it, when it, when it, when an, something comes up, you almost get like this, like couple of milliseconds of just like, it like pulls you out of your body and you like get to view the situation and you say, do I want to be a part of this or not? Right. And if you're like, no, I don't want to be a part of it. It's like your, your level of um, stress and worry about the situation is like, com it's completely eliminated. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other thing I think about it too, is it's like when you have a long work day and you, you end your work day, right. You go and do a meditation for 20 minutes and it's like someone's, it's like the day scribbled on a whiteboard, all this stuff. And then like you meditate and it's just like all completely wiped clean. You're just like, it's like gone. Yeah. And one thing that would like really stood out for me is how I knew it was working <laughs> is my son would be like, dad, you didn't meditate today. <laughs> like he noticed yeah. such a huge difference in yeah. me. Um, and, and the meditation is just like one of the building blocks of this whole entire method. But I, I believe it's absolutely crucial. And for you, I mean, I love it, dude. In, in like a, in like a two month period, you've literally gone from like thinking it's nonsense to seeing it as a absolute foundational portion of your life. Yeah. I, I'm not going to stop. Honestly, it's added to my everyday routine. It's helped me and not just meditation, but working with you through everything. It's helped me realize don't worry about stuff that's outside of your control. Mm -hmm. Right. I used to wake up at three, 4 a.m. in the morning, just like having a panic attack, worrying about finances, debt. How am I going to do X, Y, and Z for work? I don't really worry about that stuff anymore. What I focus on now is what's important to me, which is my wife and my children. Absolutely. And myself. And they appreciate you for that. Yeah. I know that for a fact. They, yeah. they appreciate you for that. And, and the reality is like, again, when, when, when you're, when you're digging into yourself and you're trying to understand who you are, the thing for me is like that person was always there. They were just like buried in the, in the false beliefs that I had about myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's that person's always been there. And the funny thing is like for you, Brad, like I think in our family, you're so loved and everybody loves you. I think it, to some level, you didn't see that person in yourself. Absolutely not. Which is so sad, right? Yeah. Like, like the per everybody sees the good person that you are, but like, what's sad is like you can't see it for yourself. Well, I think what it, the reason why for me, for example, why it was like that is because I had so much unaddressed emotional damage, mm -hmm. right? I thought I was unworthy. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, people shouldn't feel this way, or shouldn't think I'm a good guy because I don't feel that way myself. And it's not because I was doing bad stuff or like anything wrong. It was just. I didn't know who I was and I didn't love myself and like even working out, man, like I would, I'd be like, Oh, you, you should stop working out. Right. Because who, who does it matter for? 
<laughs> advantage for you, man. Yeah. Now I realize that. <laughs> like I realize how important it is to take care of yourself. Right. Yeah. And I think I, this is something I preach big time in the program is you cannot give to your loved ones. If you do not give to yourself, if you don't take that time for yourself, like working out meditation, um, just, just giving some time to yourself, you, you, you are so depleted in being able to give to them. Mm -hmm. So it's like the whole, the whole thing is like, I feel like moms do this a lot, but it's like they, they, they give so much to their kids and they don't really like, um, they don't give to themselves and they forget themselves right. and then they feel so burned out. Right. And, and, but in their minds, they're like, well, I'm trying to give to someone else. And I just say like, so harshly, you have to give to yourself. And we, a lot of times we don't feel like we're worthy of it. Like you said, yeah. you didn't feel like you're worthy. So when I would come and say, Brad, you're such a good guy. Little did I know that was actually hurting you yeah. because in your mind, you're telling yourself, well, I'm not, he doesn't really know who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt about myself for, a, for, for the longest time. And it wasn't until I, until I had those deep experiences where I was like, oh my gosh, I can love myself. And once you do that, it's so freaking wild, dude. Like, I just can't, I, it's so wild that I like am so passionate about like, how do I help other people do this? Well, isn't it crazy how naturally that comes once you start loving yourself, like wanting to help other hundred percent dude. Right. Yeah. Once you, yeah. Once you, once you like give to yourself and you tr discover who you are, the need to give to other people is insatiable. Yeah. It is absolutely insatiable. I cannot think about anything else than like, how do I help other people get out of where I was because I was in a horrible place, like suicidal place. How do I help people get out of there and see that all they have to do is give to themselves, discover who they are, and it will change everything. And it sounds so cliche and it sounds so, I know how people are hearing this. I know it because I was there and I heard it myself. When people would say, you can be better, you can do this. I remember listening to Tony Robbins when I was like 19 years old after I had left the FLDS religion. Yeah. I was listening to one of his tapes. He was saying something very similar, right? Yeah. And I was like, how, how, how do you do this? How do you do this? I don't understand how you do this. And now being in this place where I'm, where I'm here and I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I help other people? And then what's even crazier is like, getting you to, to agree to do the program and then having you have the results that I also had from it, dude, makes my freaking heart scream. I just yeah. love it. I yeah. freaking, I can't, you can't, I can't tell you how much I love it, that it's actually working for you. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's been one of the greatest things that's happened to me in my recent time, in recent years, man, it's been really helpful. And I think what it comes down to why people, don't feel like they can start any place is because they don't want to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get outside their normal routine. Right. So I think when it comes to people who want to start like loving themselves, they just have to be willing to put in the work, the hard work and the daily routines. Um, and here's the thing, it's going to be different for every single person. Right. Right. So you just have to find what works for you and run with it. Right. You know? Yeah. I, that That's one thing I was going to ask you is, um, you know, as we wind down here, what would you, if you could tell yourself, let's say a year ago to, to where you are now, what would you tell yourself about how to go about this problem? Like, cause I know you were skeptical, right? Yeah. You're skeptical about, I mean, all of it. Right. So what would you tell yourself if you could like about taking, doing meditation, taking, right. Doing all this stuff. Number one, be honest with yourself down to like the nitty gritty, like at what time am, am I going to wake up? Right. Who, who am I? What do I really want with life? Do I, am I happy with my job? And that's really what it comes down to is being honest with yourself with every little thing and being authentic to yourself. Um, you and I have been talking a lot about like intuition mm -hmm. lately. I didn't think that was a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> intuition is spot on. It's the thing. It, and <laughs> your sister, her intuition is always right. And I'm really learning from her to always go with your gut. Mm -hmm. 
And I've never done that. I've always, I think most people, whenever they have an intuition or like a gut feeling, they go away from it because it makes them feel uncomfortable. Well, yeah. And also I think Brad, it's because we do lie to ourselves. Yeah. So then we don't trust ourselves. So then when we get that gut feeling, we don't trust the gut feeling. When in reality, when you get to that, when you move across that threshold and you start to love yourself and trust yourself and believe in yourself, when that intuition comes, you start to realize how right it is. And it's like this guiding light that's there all the time. And when you have this clear communication with your intuition, it will tell you exactly what to do, exactly how to be. It will reduce the amount of stress you have. And meditation like creates that pathway that that makes it like a crystal clear communication between the two that just absolutely expands your life to a level that you've never even expected that you could get to. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, that's incredible, man. Well, look, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I think we're going to continue to follow your journey and, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe down the road, we'll have you on and kind of explain where you've, what you've done and where, where you've gone from then. And, and, uh, man, I can't, I can't tell you how much I love you and I appreciate you coming on and, and, and helping me out. Yeah, no, I really appreciate appreciate it, Tom. And you know, you're my bigger brother. I love you. It's been great to see you grow over the last 14 years. Um, it's just amazing to really see where you are now and thank you for helping me. Awesome, you really man. changed my life, man. Hey, I love you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. We'll see you. Yeah.